In this tutorial we're going to look at some simple string manipulation ideas that you may find useful for your hangman project. By string manipulation I mean we can take the contents of a string variable whether that was one word or an entire paragraph and do some fancy things to it. We can examine every single character in that string if we're looking for a particular character. We can count how many characters were actually typed in the string and so on. In this little sample project we can see that we enter a string in the top text box and then press submit. All that does is take our string that we've input and put it into a string variable. Then using that string variable we can find out the length or the number of characters that were typed originally. Down here I've got two list boxes that appear to have exactly the same contents and of course they do it's just that the data sources for both are different. In the substring uh, list box here on the left all I've done is assign the substring method to my input variable which is the string that I typed up here and I've gone straight from there to the list box. I've extracted with the substring method every single letter one at a time and therefore managed to put them on different lines in the, in the list box. Over here in the array all I did was add an extra line of code. This time instead of going straight from the variable to the list box with each letter that we extract using the substring method we're going to put that letter into a different element of the array and then the data source for this list box here is not one letter at a time straight from the variable, but it's actually coming from an array. Now the rest of this PowerPoint is going to be available in the handouts folder of Dropbox. But for the time being, let's go to Visual Studio and actually see this project in action. So let's type something into the text box. Parnell. Now the word Parnell is added to a string variable. In this case I've called that input. When I click length, it counts up how many characters are in the word Parnell, which is 7, and then outputs that number. Substring, I've now managed to use a loop to go through every single letter one at a time in that input variable and output it straight to a list box versus the array, it's doing effectively the same thing. It's just that now my data is sitting, my data as in each individual letter, is sitting in a different element of an array. So let's look at the code behind this. Now this is something already familiar to you. Input variable, you see up here, is assigned the value of whatever we typed in this text box. All I've added is two simple string manipulation ideas. Remember trim? That was to get rid of any leading or trailing spaces from the text box. If I had pressed spacebar before I started typing or spacebar after I'd finished typing. And then just because I can, I've changed all of that input, regardless of how I originally typed it, into uppercase letters. That's why the letters in my two list boxes at the bottom of the form are all in capitals despite the fact that only the cap first letter, P, was typed as a capital and all the rest was typed originally as lowercase. Now we get on to something new, looking at the length or the number of characters in a string. So here we have an integer variable that's going to store that value. And how do I get that? Well, it's easy. I take my variable that I typed in that word Parnell and then this time I've used the length property, dot length. That's going to place into this variable here a number that equates to the number of times I pressed my pressed a key inside that text box. So Parnell is a word that contains seven characters. So now my value of the num characters integer variable is seven. I've got another way I could do it. And that's using the len function. So if I just redeclare that,
This time I just go len for short, that's short for length, and then in brackets put the name of the variable that I want it to count up the number of characters. It would help if I typed things accurately. If we run it now, we can see the len function produces exactly the same output as the length property. So we type hanal again and it goes into the variable. Now it's going to check the number of characters in that variable. And again we get 7. So it doesn't matter whether you, whether you use the length property or the len function. The result is the same. Now this is where things really get interesting. I'm going to use the substring method. This takes up to two parameters, as mentioned in the PowerPoint. The first parameter, which I've called i here, simply tells us which character in the string do we want to start taking letters from. And then the second parameter, which is entirely optional, this tells us well, how many characters do we want to take at a time from that string. So let's look at this code one line at a time. For i is integer equals 0 to input.length minus 1. So i is my variable that is going to serve two purposes here. One is going to simply track how many times the loop will run. And the second one is whatever the number is here, 0, 1, 2, etc. I want that to also correspond to a particular character in the string. Like a regular for loop, we've got to have a start, 0, and an end point, input.length minus 1. I'm starting at 0 because ultimately I want to be able to add this to an array, so why not? If I started at 1 here, I'd just go to input.length and chop off minus 1. But because I've started from 0, I've actually got to add minus 1, otherwise my loop will run one too many times compared to the number of characters in the word that I've got. Now this really is the interesting line. I've got a variable declared globally as letter. That letter is declared as a char data type, meaning this can only store one alphanumeric character at a time, as opposed to a string that can store one or more characters at a time. So into my letter variable, I'm going to take a portion of that original string variable that I called input. And what portion, you may ask? Well, the substring method is going to say, well, just go on whatever character that equates to my loop here. So the first time through the loop, I'm actually going to go 0, minus, zero to minus 1, which is take my very first letter in the input variable. And how many letters do I want to have a look at? Well, I only want to look at one at a time. Now add that one letter, which was P, if our input was Parnell. Take that one letter, add it to the list of items in the list box called list letters. Now if we compare this with the array, they're actually very, very similar. This time, I've declared an array that's going to store a number of letters. In fact, each letter in the string that we input originally. This is a character array, so char is going to be its data type. That means I can only store one alphanumeric character in each element of the array, which is exactly what I want for my purposes here. Now, I don't know what the person is going to input each time as the original string. So here's another way of setting the upper bound of this array called letters. The upper bound is going to equate to whatever I typed, which is being put into that input variable, dot length minus 1. Now I'm going to loop through the array, just like, sorry, I'm going to loop through each character in the string variable, just like I did up here for the substring function. In fact, it's exactly the same line of code. Again, to extract one letter at a time, which is if we read from right to left, Extract one letter, starting with the current letter that we're on, as if we're iterating through each letter in the word. Take it, extract it, that's what substring does, 
from which variable, the input variable, and add that one letter that's been extracted into the variable called letter. Now add that one letter to the current index of the array. Now this is why I started counting from zero to input.length minus one, because my loop or my counter variable i is serving two purposes. It's keeping track of how many times I'm running through the loop, which should equate to the number of characters I've got in the original string variable, which is why it's input.length minus one if I start from zero. But it's important that I start from zero here because the first time I add a letter to my array, I want the array index to be zero because that's the first element in my array. And then the final thing I do is just take that current index of the array, the letter I just added, and add that to the collection of items known as list array letters. And that's how I get my final output. Have a go yourself.